Welcome to J Heart Model Works. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over how I get through wet sanding the body and then using a rotary tool to polish it back up. Welcome to my workbench. Let's get started. Hey guys, Justin here. Sanding and polishing are one of my least favorite parts of the model building process. I love spraying bodies, I hate sanding and polishing them. But it's a part that really needs to be done. Unless you own an actual industrial grade clean room, there's always going to be dust and junk that gets in the clear. Also, if your 2K goes down too heavy, it can look kind of syrupy or toy-like, especially along the panel lines. Now you can leave a good 2K job without sanding and polishing. It'll be really shiny, but sanding it back and getting rid of the dust and polishing it back up to a high shine will take a good paint job to that next level. So just wanted to do a quick video to show you guys how I get through the process. All right, we're gonna do a quick video on how I do my sanding and polishing. I'm gonna start with our body, of course. And as you can see, it's just, look, there's a spot right there. There's a couple of spots right there. It's just a little bit of dust that got into the clear coat. It's nothing major. And we're going to take care of this real quick and real easy. I'm going to start with some micro mesh. We're using 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, and 12,000. Nice and wet. I'm just going to start sanding in one direction, back and forth. Now, a few things that I try to do is I try to avoid sharp edges. And I don't push a lot of pressure down. So I don't have any dust right on the edge. So I don't really need to push on the edge. Another thing is you don't really want to put a lot of pressure because these A-pillars are super thin. It's not going to take much pressure at all to break an A-pillar. We're going to work these back and forth for a bit. Then we're going to stop and check our work. We're going to take and dry it off. Now you'll see that we've got it. It's a very dull. But you can also very well see that there's shiny around those dust nibs. What we want is to eliminate the shiny. We want it all evenly dull. We get some more water. Continue wet sanding. We're going in a back and forth motion. Do not go side, just do not change directions and do not do circles. You want to cut in one direction. So we're making progress, but we can still see that shiny ring around the dust nibs, which means we're not sanding that area. The sandpaper is hitting the dust nib, so it goes over it like a bump. So the sandpaper is doing this, and it's missing all this area around. Eventually, as this gets worn down on the top, it's going to be flat, and we'll eventually be sanding a flat surface. Now we want to try to avoid the front, the edges, because the 2K is thinner here along these edges. So it's going to be really easy to sand through the 2K and get down into the plastic, and then you pretty much have to start painting all over again. So with a candy job like this, you can't fix that. You'll never even out the, the color between the damaged area and the regular area. It'll always be a very sharp contrast between them. Now you're going to be tempted to put a lot of pressure in, and you really don't want to. If you're pushing a lot of pressure in, you're going to put really deep scratches in that will become harder to take out when we move to our subsequent grits. So 
So we finally got everything fairly smooth here. If you notice, it's all equally dull. There's no shiny circles. There's no protruding dust nibs. And that's what we're looking for with the 4000 grit. It is going to take a little bit. I think we've been at this for about 15 minutes now. Well, 14 minutes, according to the camera. Um, so, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of work. Again, we want to stay away from the edges. And what I mean doesn't, I don't mean don't sand past the edges. What I mean is don't be angling down and grabbing these edges. Because that's going to get you into that real thin 2K area. But that's where we're at with the 4000. Now, if you haven't pushed too hard, then you don't have any super deep scratches. And the remaining grits are going to take less work. So we're going to step up to the 6,000 grit. And with this, we're going to go side to side instead of back and forth. Because what we're, we put scratches this way, using the 4,000 grit, we cut this way. Now we're going to cut across, and we're going to take those scratches out. So that's starting to look pretty good. Still need to do a little bit more work, but if you notice, it's getting a little shinier. And that's because we're getting rid of the deep scratches from the 4000 grit. So the 4000 is really a cutting grit. It's for taking off excess material. It's for taking off that top layer of 2k and getting the dust nibs out and stuff like that it's it's going to cut it's going to cut fast and it's going to cut fairly deep 6000 is also for cutting it's going to cut out those 4000 scratches and kind of start leveling off our surface I'm going to go all around, give everything a nice, even sand. And you definitely want to make sure that you wipe the surface down between grits. That's going to remove any of the cutting material that comes off the sandpaper so that it's not getting picked up by the next grit of sandpaper and putting those grits. So when you go to sand with the 8000, you're not putting 6000 grit scraping down into the plastic so it's also important to make sure you wipe your work down and it also allows you to check it because when it's wet it all looks super glossy again you can't really tell if you've got any problems but that is looking good so far and that was only a couple of minutes compared to the nearly 15 with the 4000 grit we're going to go back to moving back and forth with the 8000 and the 8000 is more of a polishing grit it's going to take out the 6,000 scratches, but at this point, we're really more about smoothing the material and less about removing material. So that's where we're at with the 8000, and that took almost no time at all. Our final sandpaper is going to be our 12,000 grit, and this one we are going to do in circles. This is absolutely a polishing grit. This is not cutting anything. I mean, it cuts to some extent. Everything cuts. Any kind of abrasive that you're using is going to cut. But what I mean is... We're not trying to level anything at this point. We are just shining up the clear coat. Getting everything nice and super smooth. It's already pretty level. We're just getting off any high spots. 
and leveling that clear out into a clear uniform sheet. Now with this grit, you're going to do a lot less damage, so I find it's okay to kind of go over the edges just to make sure you don't have any sanding marks from the previous grits. I'm not going to sit here and go like that with it, but I will put a little bit of pressure around the edges just to make sure everything's nice and evenly polished out. So now we're starting to look shiny again. Now we're going to move on to polishing. And a lot of guys like to polish by hand. I am not one of those guys. I like to polish with a rotary tool. I'm going to use my Dremel. And the very first thing we're going to do is kick this thing down to the very bottom setting. For mine, it's 5,000 RPM. So we'll start with our Dremel tool. And I've got one of these little extension pads that goes into my Dremel, and it's got some Velcro on the tip. I have three pads. I have my orange pad, which is aggressive. My yellow pad is a medium. And the black pad is a fine. Okay, so the audio on this is going to sound a little different and probably won't match my hands. I went off on a tangent, so I'm recording a more concise voiceover. I like to use the Tamiya compound set. I've used Meguiar's in the past. I've used Novus. They are both good products. One of the reasons I like the Tamiya compounds is they contain no silicone. Silicone will contaminate your surface, and then when you spray paints over it or a clear over it, you'll end up with fish eyes that looks like this. Most body shops won't even allow any products with silicone in them in their shops because of the havoc it can wreak on paint. However, a lot of hobby and even one-to-one -one home car compounds contain silicone. The Tamias don't. Now, normally I don't wet sand and I definitely don't polish my primer or color coats. I just usually don't feel the need for it. But there are rare occasions, like doing candy jobs, where you may get something in a base coat and you need a perfectly smooth surface before your next coat. With the Tamiya polishes, you can wet sand and then polish the surface to get rid of any imperfections, then wash the body down really good to get any leftover compound off, and spray your next coat of paint or clear with no fear of contaminating the paint job. So we're going to start with our orange pad. And we're going to start with the coarse polish. I'm going to kind of rub this with my finger all over this surface. If I have any leftover, I will prime the pad with it. Now, polishing by hand is a lot safer than polishing by machine. You can cut through your clear coat with one of these rotary tools in a heartbeat if you are not careful. So there are a few rules to how to do this. First thing is, again, we're going to avoid these sharp edges. You want to avoid these edges like the plague because your clear is super thin here. So this material, this machine is going to start spinning. As it's spinning and it comes around, it's going to grab and start cutting into these edges. So we want to avoid edges like the plague. Step two, do not press in with the machine. You have to make contact with the machine, and you have to make contact with the body, but the spinning material is going to do all the cutting for you. You do not need to press. You should not be, like, smashing down the, the material on the pad. Just bring the material barely in contact with the surface. The more you push, the deeper you're going to gouge with this. This is a cutting material. The next thing is, do not stop in one place. When you stop, you're going to build up friction and you're going to build up heat. It's going to be possible to warp your plastic. It's going to be possible to damage your paint. Also, because this is going to be spinning at 5,000 revolutions per minute, this is going to be cutting your paint. 
always want to be moving, constantly moving, randomly in different areas, move around the park. And we're going to make sure that we have fingers under the surface. We don't want the weight of the machine pushing any sort of pressure on these A pillars. So we want to make sure, I'm going to hold this with some fingers under that surface to give that surface support so that any pressure from the weight of the machine is really going to be borne by our fingers and not by the model. I like to make sure that I'm not orbiting a whole lot which me smashing that pad kind of made it misshapen a little bit. But if you get this off like this, where your whopper jawed, you're going to see a much bigger orbit, which is going to be much more aggressive on your paint. It's also going to lead to huge swirls, so we want to kind of make sure that we're nice and centered. And with very little rotation. Not rotation, but very little orbiting. Again, I'm not stopping anywhere. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on those edges. And I'm basically just going to go for a few seconds until I stop seeing the material. Maybe just a few seconds past that. Now I'm going to take a soft cloth. Tamiya actually makes polishing cloths to go with their system. They do, of course, require you to buy them separately. And we're just going to rub down the surface to finish polishing out these edges. Make sure everything is nice and shiny. And to make sure that we have all the compounds off. We'll check our work. If you're not happy, you can do it again. Not too many times, but you can do it again. The Tamiya polishing cloths contain three cloths, a red, a blue, and a white. There's nothing different about them material-wise other than the colors match the caps on the polishes. However, you do want to make sure you're using a different cloth for each polish. So if you're using like an old t-shirt, you know, you may want to cut it up into pieces because if you use a a rag that's got an old polish on it that's a much coarser grip polish and you get that mixed in with your finer polishes you're going to defeat the purpose of the finer polishes. For the fine polish, we're going to take our orange pad off and we're going to swap in our finer yellow pad. This one's a little deformed. As far as this goes, I'm going to get it. Grab a little bit of this polish. Put the fingers under our surface. We want to keep the pad as flat as possible on the surface. We don't want to go at it at an angle. We want to keep it flat. We're not going to stop. We're not going to stay still. Just polish out the surface. Now we're going to take our blue cloth and we're just going to polish out any leftover material.
Now you can see my light overhead. So we're really starting to get our polish back. We're starting to get that shine. We've got one step left to go. So we're gonna swap our yellow pad out for our super fine black pad, and we're gonna apply the finishing compound in the white cap. And it does not take much compound. Just a little bitty dab will do it. There we go. I'm going to take a little bit of clean water, a soft bristle toothbrush, and I'm just going to carefully go through. I don't want to put a lot of pressure. I just want to get any material, any of the, the polish out of the panel lines. Now you can't see it from here. You can see the light bulb in my overhead fixture. Uh, from my point of view, I can actually see the individual LEDs in that overhead work lamp. Well, my desk lamp is my overhead work lamp. So this is a really nice polish. I'm going to finish it off with a little bit of turtle wax. Just a little bit on the tip of the finger. I'm going to rub that in real good. And we're going to let this sit about 5 or 10 minutes while we go watch one of you guys' videos on the YouTube. Alright, we're back. It's been 5 or 10 minutes or so. And as you can see, the wax has dried into a dull haze. And that's what we're looking for. I'm going to use one of these microfiber towels. I got a bunch of them on Amazon. Like Ten bucks or so for like six. We're just going to gently polish that wax off. Switch to a nice clean spot. Again, we're going to take our toothbrush and we're just going to go through the panel lines real quick. I'm also going to go through the underside just to make sure because I did get some wax on here. I want to make sure I get all that off.
into the clean portion here. And that's our final finish. Quick cheap plug for off the sprue. Guy does some fantastic aftermarket parts. It's always nice to see guys who build supplying parts because they know what we're looking for. But yeah, that's the finish that we're after. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. It was a little longer than I expected it to be. So if you made it this far, I greatly appreciate you. There's not going to be an update video on the build this week because honestly, not a lot has gotten done. Uh, I do have all the chassis and suspension components painted, as well as the wheels. However, I decided to go make everything more complicated by completely replacing the brakes because I didn't exactly like how Tamiya molded the calipers in two pieces. And I kind of felt like this car needed disc brakes front and rear instead of the drums in the back. But I didn't really look at how I was going to connect the new brakes to the uprights. So I'm currently waiting on some hard plastic tubing from Burbank's House of Hobbies. Should be in early next week and I can get going on it. From there. That's going to be all for me today. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll catch you on the next one. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also, feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comments section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comments section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.